Well, uh, good morning everyone. I'm a bit, uh, got a bit of a hangover this morning. <clears throat> yeah, I, I woke up this morning and um, I thought, did I really have a terrible nightmare last night? Did I really see one of the worst United performances uh, of uh, the modern era? And um, that we actually drew nil nil away to Cambridge FA Cup. And when I checked Facebook, I realised, looked, checked all my fo uh, postings, realised it wasn't a, it wasn't a horrible nightmare. It really did happen. And um, I I'd had, I was in a pub last night watching the game, and I, I, to be honest with you, now this morning I can remember, I can't remember much about it at all, apart from that it was shit. Um, so I think we're now we're getting to the point now that the people are starting to finally, I'm not saying I come round to my way of thinking, because I have expressed my doubts since uh, probably MK Don's way back in August. I think I put on here that, that something wasn't right. And um, that was before he spent big money and, and got rid of what... Very few people had said that, that, that you know the season before. I know I'd said it that there was quite a lot of players that shouldn't beat United because they weren't United class. And at least Van Hal went and got rid of them basically. That you know that loads of them he, he, he got rid of as we know because they weren't good enough. And, and in reality, that was I what I thought was Moyes' problem that he'd inherited a a a poor squad despite everybody saying oh we, we were champions it was a poor squad just that everybody else around us were was shit that season and Van Hal um to me Van's in United now and um I was gonna say Van Nistelrooy for a second there and Van Persie uh, was playing uh, in in the form of his career and he, he really won us uh, the the season that, that we were champions because of his goals. Um but defensively, we were still poor, and it just continued on through David Moyes when, of course, uh, Van Persie is got injured and his form dropped. Um, so, yeah, that's what I thought at the time. I thought Moyes inherited a poor squad. I felt sorry for him in that respect. Uh, and he never had the uh, the war chest. He did buy two players, as we as we know. Um, who, I, I don't know the, the, the performance out of, out of both of them this season haven't been very uh, overwhelming, and they certainly weren't last season either, especially with Fellaini. But anyway, we're on to the new manager, and uh, the, the problem with him because of because he has been a winner in other clubs is is like it's you know we, it was it was it was okay for everybody to criticise Moyes last season because he wasn't a winner. So it's so easy to have a go at the manager, oh, this blah, 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 moisey, 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 eh, moisey. It was so easy to flip and crack, have a crack at him all the time. And I thought it was unfair because I really believe, believe that the squad was poor and that the players' uh, personal performance was poor as well. And it, it, clearly to me, the players weren't performing for the manager and, and I think he lost the dressing room the day he walked in, which was said a few times before. And so I, I felt sorry for the guy and I hated everybody who was on his back. So the new manager comes in, who obviously has been a winner before, and then it, it, at the end of the day, it all goes down to results. And uh, it's results that count. It's, it's, it's just what football's all about. It's, it's, what, it's how man, managers live or die by the sore of the results they get. And uh, that the sword is definitely, uh, you know, maybe it's time for chop chop. You know, I really don't know because looking at the, looking at the style of football we're playing at the moment and the results we are getting, can anybody hand on heart say one year on, are we playing any better? No, we're not. Are the results any better? No, no, they're not. You know, do do we look like we've you know, advanced at all? No, we don't. And that team last night, I think there was five of um, Van Hal's signings were in it. I think five were in it. So you can't just say, oh, well, he's trying to build a team. Well, he's, you know, he's got the remnants of, of of our squad. He's got rid of the ones he didn't want. He spent under 50 million. And still, we're not, we're not advancing. Still, the football is awful to watch. Really poor. 
You know, United's reputation it was built on free-flowing attacking football. And have we had that? Well, you know, we obviously we didn't get it last season, but have we got it this season? No. And the, the problem, the problem being is because people have had a go at me on YouTube and Facebook because I have the, the audacity to say, look, <laughs> it doesn't look like this guy knows what he's doing. And people says, how can you say that? You know, he's a winner. He's a winner. Well, hold on a second. Sorry, go back in his history. He hasn't always been a winner. He hasn't. Yes, he has won things, but he's gone to some clubs and, and I think the national team, the first time he, he, he took charge, and he hasn't always been a winner. And you know, quite often he's fallen out with players, he's fallen out with owners, and the, the players haven't understood his philosophy, and it ain't worked. So don't everybody say he is a winner. He isn't always a winner. He's been a loser. He's a winner and he's a loser. And so now with United, at the moment, would you say he's a winner? No, I wouldn't. Is he a loser? <clears throat> Time will tell. But how much longer can you give him? How much more money do you want to give him to spend? If he's already spent big and nothing's happened, you know? And if you, if you just look at the, you know, the two FA Cup teams, we've struggled to beat. We struggled to beat Yeovil. The first half was an utter shocker. You know, if it wasn't for Herrera's goal and, and the fact that um, and that the the, the, the um, Yeovil were, were trying to attack uh, to, to pull pull a goal back that that left the, you know that space the back for Di Maria to go and score the goal for for Rooney to punt up up for them, you know that that they they could have easily won. And last night, you know, I think did you know who who was the better team? Who was the better team last night? You know, were United any better than Cambridge? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know much about the game. I do remember a Cambridge header being cleared on, on the line by uh, a Cambridge player then tried to head her in <laughs> and didn't work out for him. And, and this the, the thing about the goalie as well. Our goalie at the moment, it's, it's a bad day when the goalie's the man of the match. And he's, he's been the man of the match several times this season. And people have said, oh, well, don't know what you're moaning about. We're in fourth. We're only in fourth by default that Everton and Liverpool... You know, I've been terrible this season. All they've got to do is like stop playing not not bad, and we're going to struggle because we're not playing well at all. We're only in fourth by default. All the other teams are playing shit, and the fact that our goalie, our goalie is, is time and again saved our neck by some outstanding saves. If if our goalie buggers off to to Spain, we are buggered because he is he's saved our skin. We won be fourth. If it wasn't for him, it, it's it's unquestionably without to doubt it's true. And if you look at the money that's been spent, if you look like for, for for instance and look at like the money we spent on Di Maria, if you take that money and then take a look take the all the money that's ever been spent in the history of Yeovil and Cambridge, that's the club building the club, building the actual stadiums, all the players' wages that they've ever paid in the history of the club. Then the two clubs put the two clubs together, and you still probably wouldn't get the money that we're paying that we paid for Di Maria, and, and yet what have we seen from him so far? Oh dear, look at the money some of the players that are on two hundred thousand Rocco's on that I think it was a week. My God, all you know, are we getting the performances from these players for the wages they're getting paid at the moment? Fuck me, no, we're not. So you have to wonder what is going on. What is what is Van Hal actually writing down in his notebook? Why doesn't he actually just get out and stand on the touchline? And obviously things can't be working. What was he writing on that thing? Things aren't working again. Why didn't he actually stand on the line and be one of those managers who flipping as a go at somebody and flipping says, look, you know, I don't know. Because clearly they're not getting what he wants. You know, clearly they're not understanding philosophy. I don't understand it. Clearly the players don't understand it and the majority of the fans don't. And time is, is wearing thin on this one and massively wearing thin on what's going on. I wouldn't mind if I was watching a game where, you know, we, we played really, really good football and, and we still got and we got beat and you think, well, you, you could see an advancement, you could see attractive football coming back into it and maybe, maybe a few defensive frailties let us down, but attacking, we were attacking minded, but we're not seeing that. We saw the Liverpool Chelsea Cup game um, during the week. Goodness sake, as soon as the whistle went, both teams were at it. 
attack, 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 both sides. It was really a really good game to watch, even though I don't like any of those two teams. But for, for football as a sporting spectacle, which is what it, what it all is, you know, the reason why we like football is because we like the game of football and we all eventually choose a team to support to make watching, watching football more interesting. As a sporting spectacle, at the moment, watching United is, is dull as dishwater. It's boring, it's just awful. It's like chess with a round ball. It's, it's bollocks. And then you look to like Chelsea and Liverpool playing and for the, for the moment they whistled and went both got going for it. It was a great game. Really good game. I was thinking, no fan has watched this thinking, yeah, I, I remember football this way. This sort of attacking free flowing stuff. Pretty good. For the moment whistle, just attack. Just go for it. Don't flip in like chessboard back, 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 sideways, back, back, sideways. Thread it up, bring it back. Oh my God. Oh dear. Anyway, I don't know what the answer is. I really, really don't know what the answer is. I, does the guy know what he's doing? Does Giggs even talk to him? Does he actually share his philosophy with Giggs? Does anybody understand the philosophy? What is going on in training? When those players turn up on the pitch, it's like, I've said this so many times this season, they've never met each other before. So they're not expecting different people to be in certain positions. Some of the passing last night was awful. Some of the entrapping of the ball flipping, balls flipping, people put the foot out and bobbling off. Some of the crossing... Oh, flipping it! I'm wrong. I'm fed up going on about it because it's just getting boring now. So uh, yeah, so luckily that game Cambridge was a Friday night because otherwise this Sunday I would have been in travelling from Scotland to Cambridge, paying out you know a lot of money. Ever knows at least what was it? Fifty quid for a ticket and about sixty quid, uh, fifty quid on the bus and petrol flipping thirty quid. I don't know. Move. It would have been money and I would have been massively gutted to have spent that money. And to have seen a performance like that, like I've been good, like we went down to just, uh, QPR the other week and I saw that performance, even though we won 2 0, it was, it was still rubbish. It was still rubbish. And, it, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, the manager has got to accept some responsibility. Or well, maybe all responsibility. I don't know, but I think the days of of people defending him because of his prior record that is totally wearing thin now. So anybody wants to come and says, "Oh, he's a winner. Oh, it'll be all right next season." Why isn't it not all right now? Why aren't we seeing some sort of advancement now? Why aren't we seeing the fruits of spending 150 million and all the training is philosophy? Why aren't we seeing encouraging signs? How many games this season have we watched? That we've walked out and said, well, we can, we can see where he's going on this one. We can see what he's trying to do. How many games? Three? I'd say maybe only two. Two games that we've played well. We've played well in. It's rubbish. Anyhow, let's rant over. Bye-bye.